Hey there everybody and welcome back to the Scrub Club Invitational number one. We're now in the second round of the losers bracket and in this matchup or best of three I guess you could call it we have Patsy versus Iskar Jarek. A TVT I think it might be the first TVT of the tournament. So what we'll do, without further ado, is we'll jump into the game and with our new fancy overlay here, um, we don't have to worry about trying to hide the time from you guys again. So without further ado, in the bottom left hand corner of Daybreak LE, we have our blue Terran Patsy, who most of you would probably know uh, as it appeared in at least one of the actual episodes of Scrub Club. So he's, uh, that's how he got his invita invitation, invitation, that's it, invite. Uh, he got it through participation in the actual segment. That and also he's a good friend of ours. So in the bottom left we have our blue Terran Patsy. And then in our top right hand corner, top right hand corner of the map we have our orange Terran who's crushing face so far in the loser's bracket, Iskar Jarak who is slightly behind on his timings because it looked like he was away from his computer or keyboard for a bit there at the start. So that's why Patsy has slightly faster timings on all of his things so far. But I'm sure this shouldn't make too much of a decisive factor unless a bunch of workers stream through an unfinished supply depot wall off. So after he finishes the supply depot, Iskar is going to go straight off for a scout where Patsy, it looks like, has done pretty much the same thing, but has elected to go probably the faster route. I mean, they're both probably the same length, but ergonomically that seems a bit faster. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? So both players going for the same kind of opening, uh, just the time difference on that initial thing being the main decisive factor. So I'll just talk about the players for a bit whilst they get set up. With their, with their stuff and whatnot. So, uh, Patsy unfortunately was unable to uh, participate in his winners bracket um, games. He uh, he had prior uh, engagements on and wasn't able to make it there in time. So there was a walkover against myself. Uh, but he was able to come online for the losers bracket game, and so here he is now competing against Iska in that very in that same uh, match. Yep, so, and also down in the, uh, oh, I was just talking about the player while looking at the other one's base, but that's right. So, uh, Iskar so far got knocked out in the first round by Jathura uh, in the winner's bracket, and I believe he was in group B. And so, uh, I'm gonna say now spoilers, guys. So if you haven't gone and seen the game so far, uh, watch from the start probably the best way to do it and so I don't accidentally ruin this for you guys but so after getting 2-1 uh, budge through in the opening round uh, he then has gone on to 2-0 Federator and is now pitted up against Patsy in the second round of the losers bracket as he throws down that tech lab for that stim timing. Now it looks like uh, Patsy's doing a similar thing uh, only difference is he has his second barracks up a bit faster where Iskar has elected to go for an early expand and a bunker to defend that at his natural. Now we've got a reactor going on the other one, on the other barracks here and a choice for combat shield which if he can swell enough numbers through that should counteract uh, the effects of stim pack but this bunker would pretty much nullify anything, so this is more of a defensive move by Patsy than an offensive one. So both players staying on top of their SEV production. Uh, his car slightly behind, but that's because he's going for that fast expand, so his money's quite low at the moment and nice placement of that uh, supply depot as we've seen in the other games as well. The engineering bay also going down for researchers where Patsy looks like he's going, uh, he's got his three racks up now and he's going for a factory as well.
now. Uh, since filming his episode of Scrub Club, uh, Patsy has been elevated in league from the old good old days of bronze into that of the silver league. And so he's he's getting better with his mechanics, he's learning everything, he's trying to build more and more SCVs whenever he can remember to. And he's learning builds the other day. Uh, he, I sent him a link to the 111. So if you find him on ladder, watch out because he's going to practice that until that uh, it's embedded in his brain. So the expansion of this card, Jarek, is now beginning its uh, path to saturation. And the main is also being saturated as well because of that mass SEV transfer he prefers to use in his games. So the bunker is complete and Stim's finishing up in a couple of seconds. So it looks like we're going into a mid to late game kind of thing and we won't see many engagements until later in the match. So what we might do is we might fast forward actually uh, until about the 10 minute mark just because of this. Oh, hang on. Maybe I was wrong. Instead we have a small force from Patsy moving out to see what he can do. And walking through the Zelnaga towers in order to get that bit of vision. But unfortunately for him, this bunker and that many marauders is going to put a halt to any early aggression. So it's just going to be about how many units he will lose in this engagement. So he should completely pull back, but unfortunately for him, Stim is completed for the other player and quite a mess left on the docks of Daybreak with only 30 damage sustained to that bunker. So if we open up the income tab we see that the mules and extra SEVs of Iskar have provided a severe advantage in income with an extra couple of marines a minute or blizzard minute I should say. So unfortunately for Patsy as well, because he hasn't expanded as of yet, uh, he can't actually sustain production off this many tech support, uh, tech structures. And remember, the rule is, guys, three and a half, if you're playing Terran, roughly three and a half tech structures or production facilities per base, because you can't, yeah, a fully saturated base can only support that many. So. That's why we have downtime in both the starport and the factory, and only really three of the barracks is producing any kind of units. So taking up a defensive perimeter in his own base, probably to go out and try and take that expansion. So now that it has slowed down, we'll just shoot on through a bit faster, just to get to the meat of the... Alright, and we'll slow down, whoops, and we we'll won't slow the whole way down. But it looks like we're going to have a drop from Iskar with a Marine who's legging it on foot. So the supply advantage is going quite heavily to Iskar because of that early engagement and uh, the, op the choice not to expand yet by Patsy. Uh, he'll just be able to recreate his force uh, much more efficiently. Uh, he is going for the C or Cad Cassadius, Cad Cad U C. He's going for the medevac energy upgrade ability and we'll see how this engagement goes here. So it's all going to be about damage control for Patsy and how many SEVs he loses. Uh, unfortunately that heal did go down as well. So he needs to be pulling all of these because he hasn't actually built enough. Alright, and will he lose these medevacs? Loses one and he doesn't lose a second so fairly uh, good, oh, not fairly good, holy crap, that's an underestimate, understatement, uh, severely good, drop by Iskar Jarek, and you can see that that's represented in the supply count with 8 SEVs to 50, which is quite the lead, so we'll just jump back into the production tab, and we see that Iskar's gearing up for a bit more of a macro game, game adding on another factory, and probably looking to take a third base very soon, establishing a forward position with his units, and speak of the devil, the third goes down. And at that time, the second for Patsy finishes. So he's going to be trying to be, make sure that he stays on top of his SCV production for the rest of this game so that he can try and rein in whatever lead 
uh, Iskar has at the moment. So this is just a, another example of how that stim timing that uh, Iskar has been working on has managed to work its way in and it's now even incorporating uh, upgrades and concussive shells as one fluid movement and even another barracks being added on just to try and get rid of some of this money. Uh, evidently a huge transfer of SCVs again. That's probably the only thing uh, he might want to consider working on with his play is just trying not to transfer as many because these haven't even been mined out yet. Oh, and will he lose the second dropship? No. Right, so he's going to be able to pick up some SCVs here and do a bit of a counter drop. Pulse production on that starport, but where are the units for this car? Nowhere yet. So he's going to be losing a couple of SCVs, but here comes the counter drop. And it doesn't look like Patsy's going to see it in time. He needs to load up and leave. Unfortunately, not done in time, so let's have a look at the supply. So he has reined in the amount of workers. Uh, I think it's Control R, that's what we want. So he was able to kill six workers in that exchange, which is an alright trade, I guess. So three orbital commands up. Uh, this one's got quite a few mules to call down, and it should be calling them down very soon. There we go, bang, 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 bang but the army of his car is probably what is going to end up winning him this particular game just because of how heavily uh, heavily stocked up and upgraded it is as well because unfortunately uh, Patsy is only at 0-1 where his car is nearing his 2-2 which in mirror matchups uh, upgrades are usually the defining factor uh, then succeeded by a lot of units and then not getting supply blocked which Patsy needs to work on now. He's just throwing down uh, two supply depots just because he's on two base. So that's another thing, guys. Uh, oh, that's good positioning of that army to stop any counter drops. But uh, for every base you have, you can build uh, you can build units out of three and a half production facilities. And, but you also, in order to not get supply blocked, you need to be building. Uh, say you've got two base, you need to be building two supply depots at a time. Now, it looks like he's just, uh, Patsy's going to walk straight into the siege line here of Iska and will lose the first couple of units. So down, down, bang, bang, bang. And unfortunately, they look like they're on movement. And this is going to be curtains, I think. That hurts. Oh, fantastic. Alright, so when I do that, it, the um, timer thing drops down, so that's... Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, I'll have to work on that. So, Iskar starting his uh, three attack upgrade, and I'm sure the, the, uh, the armor part of it shouldn't be too far behind. So he's just getting himself together, getting ready to break this line. But I'm fairly sure if he just burnt one scan there, he'd know what was coming. And even a cattle bruiser coming out on the field now. So, all the siege tank here die. Not yet. And, uh, oh, a bit of a hero siege tank, it looks like. Very good. And so this will be GG coming up any second now, hopefully. So we can burn through and go to the next game. So I'll even speed it up a bit. It looks like there is a bit more to go because YGG would have really missed up at all. And this siege tank's got a fair amount of kills. The 7 kill corporal siege tank. As the medevac comes up onto the high ground to provide vision and those marines get melted away. And 
simply just walking up the ramp into the base. Stim, fantastic. So a really good execution of the build and just as plus three hits in a couple of seconds. Uh, it'll be dead. Good idea. Uh, the hidden base for Patsy. Unfortunately at this stage of the game it's not really going to help. And he's yeah, he needs to pop on out of the game now as he's on board that he needs through the firing line. He's apparently he's still got some fight left in him. And just wanted to wait until the very last second before the GG was called, apparently. But the battle cruisers will do their job. And there is GG. They open fire. So, uh, pretty good game at the start here. Uh, Iskar just absolutely crushing face so far through the loser's bracket. So we'll come back to game two and we'll see if Patsy can make any kind of recovery.